2024 meeting to order, and our first order of uh, business is our Pledge of Allegiance. If you stand with me, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And next, we're going to call upon Councilman Bond to give us our invocation. We bow our heads, please. O oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of your precious Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we say thank you. Thank you for blessing us to be here one more time to carry out the business of unity. Please help us and guide us and lead us with your knowledge as we try to protect and prove our sweet little town. Even though we might not agree on everything, please let us stay together as a council because together we can work things out and do what's right for unity. In Jesus' name I say amen. Thank you, as always, Councilman Bond. In first order of business after that is approval of our minutes. Uh, Council received our um, proposed minutes from our August 13th and our special meeting of August 26th. Were there any uh, questions regarding those minutes or requests for revisions? There appear to be none. I'll entertain a motion and a second. Okay, we've got a motion and second. All in favor of uh, approving those minutes, please signify by saying yes. Yes. Any opposed? Okay, those minutes are now approved. The uh, next order of business that we have is public comment. I'd just like to remind uh, the general public that those comments are limited to three minutes. And our first speaker tonight is Hal Murray. Hal, come forward. Mr. Mayor, distinguished members of the Town Council, and members of the public, my name is Todd Murray, and I'm a resident of Edenton. I request the answers to the questions that follow to be on the record, and to the following public comment be part of the public record of this meeting. Do you, the public, know that Hayes Farm, totaling 194 acres and seven tracks, has been annexed into the Town of Edenton as of July 1 of this year? Although the annexation was, filed, was finalized only recently, the Town Council has been working quietly on the annexation since before January 15th of this year. Did you know that? All the while without public comment or hearing. This is not transparency in governance. Did you know that by law, and I quote, municipalities must provide and contract to provide basic services to the area. These services include police protection, fire protection, solid waste collection, and the extension of water and sewer lines to the area. Hayes is a state historic site leased to and managed by Elizabeth Van Moore Foundation, a nonprofit, and now Hayes is part of the town of Edenton. As a result of this annexation, you and me will be responsible for the town services, maintenance of buildings and grounds, and other expenses, yet unknown or worse, yet undisclosed. Elizabeth Van Moore Foundation makes rules, manages Hayes, and the residents of Edenton pay the bills. Questions? Why the, town of, why the town council has not been transparent with the public about the annexation of Hayes. Now that Hayes is part of the town, what accounting numbers will be used for all financial transactions between Hayes and the town of Edenton? What separate charting accounts will be used to create and track town expenditures on Hayes? How will the public be informed of these expenses? The residents of the town of Edenton need to know the additional expenses Hayes is on the town. Both town uh, the Eden can be financially responsible for planning and executing, quote, additional parking, walking trails, public beaches, road construction, aquarium retirement programs, and mounted patrol as published in the 2004 Council pack, Packet for the Town Council Planning Retreat held January 15th of this year. Over the next three years, what specific projects, initiatives, improvements, etc., are planned or anticipated for Hayes, and what are the associated costs? Will the town of Edenton be responsible for providing, maintaining, or upgrading the following in Hayes? What are the anticipated costs of each of the following services? Extension of sewer, water gas, electric, garbage pickup, mowing and landscaping, construction of walking paths, construction of parking areas, construction of swimming areas, erosion abatement, <coughs> police protection, fire protection. 
to the town of Eaton Bay for the electric gate at the bridge that crosses between Ann's Creek. And if so, what was that cost? Will the bridge that crosses Queen <coughs> Creek from East Water Street be upgraded, enhanced, or replaced in anticipation of additional traffic from Edenton to Hayes? If so, what is the cost to the town of Edenton? Thank you. Respectfully submitted. How very grateful to be and how has 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 been our uh, policy and procedure since the beginning of the year. We'll have our town manager take a look at that, and if he's in a position, he'll report back at our. Yes, next I understand. Week. That's why. I do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank very you much. for providing that. And our next speaker is uh, Karen Murray. Miss Murray. our public comment section of our agenda. The next uh, part of our agenda is a special presentation. We got Shannon Ray here from the Eden Chowan Recreation Department and she is going to give us an update on the recreation bond re referendum. Thank you Shannon for being here. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, before we get started I gave everyone two cards. Um, being true parks and rec, we're going to have an activity. So, um, while I'm talking on your purple card or on your green card, write a recreation memory. So it can be something you did yesterday. It can be a memory from when you were small. Um, I would say a memory for me was my son and I participated in the Petapalooza dog event that was down here at Colonial Park <coughs> years ago with our Chesapeake um, retriever that was hard-headed. And, but it was a memory. We made you that. Your other card, I want you to write a recreation activity. Something that you do now. Um, whether you walk your dog, 
uh, whether you do a quilting class at the senior center, it can be something that you do in a group, it can be something that you do um, in your backyard, it can be traveling, it can be absolutely anything. So while you're pondering those, um, in your packet you also have the bond information packet uh, that has been pushed out in our community in the last couple of weeks. So this says that our commissioners have, uh, are moving forward with putting a bond in a total of $15 million on the ballot in November. Um, pretty straightforward with that. The next page in your packet, I don't have one in front of me, but if I remember it correctly, is uh, some frequently asked questions. So I'm not going to read these to you. You have it in your packet and you can see. Uh, what the bond does is allows us to have more than just informal discussions about recreation and what we can do. A bond allows us to have conversations, make decisions, and commitments for recreation facilities in Chowan County moving forward. The bond dollars do have to be spent on new recreation facilities. In our master plan and our county commissioners have prioritized a recreation complex, which can include ball fields, trails, paddling, picnic shelters, playgrounds, uh, pickleball, disc golf, anything, the options are open. Uh, the, another item that is prioritized is a new senior center. If you are familiar with our current senior center, we are in the basement of Spring Auditorium, and we have outgrown that space. So we have um, classes every day. The weight room is open. So any Swan County resident can use the weight room for free. Most of our classes are a small fee, and we do serve lunch every day. Uh, lunch is a dollar. We also are the hub for Meals on Wheels, so the um, meals are transported from where they're done in Performance County. They're dropped at the Senior Center in the morning, and our drivers pick them up and take them on their routes. The other thing that is prioritized with the bond dollars is an aquatics feasibility study. The aquatics feasibility study would allow us to look at our community, our population, our income, what we need and what we can afford and where to put that. It can be an indoor pool, it can be an outdoor pool, it can be a grand auditorium, it can be a splash pad, anything aquatics that does not include an aquarium. I did get a question about was were we going to get an aquarium if we had an aquatic feasibility study. Um, so the answer to that is no. The other thing, the other questions that are asked uh, are when would a tax increase go into effect? Um, a tax increase would be leveraged as we pull bond dollars down. So if we spend a portion of those dollars, then it would be um, probably a two or three cent tax increase. It wouldn't automatically go to 6.5 um, cents increase. This gives you examples of what those tax increases would be, and as I said, we would draw the, um, the tax increase would go into effect as we draw the dollars down. Um, how can I help? Ask questions, talk to your neighbors, talk to people that you go to church with, um, talk about recreation in general, whether we pass a bond or we do not pass a bond, all conversations uh, help us move forward and things that we, um, what we want and what we need. Right, this is something I put together, the ABCs of recreation. So I have been with the recreation department for almost 23 years. It doesn't seem like it. Some days and some days it really, really does. Um, but we do a lot more than baseball and softball and soccer. We um, manage multiple facilities, multiple parks. We also do several of these. I won't read them to you. Um, we do exercise at the <coughs> senior center. 
we administer a juvenile justice grant that does our after school plus program as well as our community service and restitution program for juveniles in our community. Um, those juveniles are court uh, referred either through our court system or through team court which is another JCPC program that is administered by the school system. So we partner with them to try to um, do diversions for juveniles that find themselves in challenging situations. We do a plethora of summer activities, everything from swimming, sailing, um, sports camps, day camps, half day camps. We spend half day at Pembroke Creek. Uh, in the mornings, three weeks in the summer, it's always the hottest and the muggiest weeks of the year. We get the kids out there paddle every day. Um, we put on white jackets and they swim in the creek, at, do activities, um, bring groups in. We have done archery for the last 10 years. We've had someone come from the fish hatchery and bring the alligator. That's always fun. But it's a way for kids to get outside and um, learn, anything, learn stuff about our natural environment. So we also manage the Senior Center now. So the Senior Center has always been a part of Shawan County. When their director left, then the Senior Center um, administration came under the umbrella of the Recreation Department. We have a full-time programmer there, Sandra Taylor. She does an amazing, amazing job. Uh, she is great with names and faces. She knows everyone when they walk in. Uh, and I have to get on her to stop talking so much because she'll talk to you half a day about what your vacation was. And people will wait in line in the hall to talk to her. So this is a comparison of what our recreation department does compared to other departments in our area. So we get asked a lot of times, and I'm sure you have heard the same thing, well, performance does this. Bertie has this. Um, sometimes we're not in those communities, but sometimes those communities are asked the same things. Well, Edenton Trovon does um, an after-school program. None of the other area um, departments in our area do that. We do uh, a ton of youth athletics. We are the only department that does every sport, every um, season, as far as baseball, softball, uh, baseball, softball, volleyball, soccer. Uh, we do basketball and cheerleading in the winter months. We um, have a ton of activities for seniors, for youth. We have lots of partnerships, either with the school, with our Smart Start, uh, with social services, with Avalon Resource Conservation um, Council. Our adult activities, we do, uh, our department in Gates County do some grant writing in-house. Uh, all the other air departments in our area contract that out. Um, we do share facilities with lots and lots of people. I know you're aware that we share facilities with the school. Um, the high school is currently using DF Walker for uh, at least lunches every day. So DF Walker is highly utilized. Right now the seniors use DF Walker from 8 to 11 every morning for walking or for pickleball. The school is in there from 11 to 2 for lunch. The Boys and Girls Club is there from 3 to 6. The Recreation Department comes back in there at 6 o'clock with practices for volleyball for cheerleading during basketball season. There's games there. Uh, it is a well-old machine most days. Uh, the same at the Northern Center, we share that facility with the middle school. We are their home court for basketball and volleyball. They have practices there five days a week from 3 to 5 o'clock when some, uh, soccer starts in the fall for basketball ending at the end of March. Any questions? I know I talked, I spoke a lot. Have our youth activity registrations been dropping? And if so, why? Youth activity registration, we have seen a decline over the years in specific sports, but other sports are increasing. Soccer numbers continue to grow. So we have our total number of youth is about where it is, within 15 to 20 total across all age groups. However, softball might be lower, soccer's higher. Volleyball's higher, softball's lower. Um, we have seen a decline in Girl, girls participating in every sport. So we might have more um, male basketball players, more seven to nine year old boys. So the total number is the same, but we don't see as many girls playing at, um, athletic at sports, soccer, anything, especially after age nine is, is what we're seeing. And we see that's consistent um, in Northeast North Carolina when we talk to other departments. Uh, comment, not a question. I deal with all five of these in the business that I'm in. 
and so many times I'm on the phone with them or at their place and they might have a question and they always refer back and say, let me call Edenton and check with them first. So that's a great thing, I think, because we're kind of the leader of this five groups. And, and all of them will tell you that. They, they refer back to us on questions. Now we just got to match them in some of their facilities. Yep, yeah, yes. that's my belief. So. Any other questions about this portion? Shannon, I've got a question. The county owned property on Queen Street does have uh, conservation restrictions. Yes. Can you give us some examples of what those restrictions are on that particular site? So we do, the county does own 90, it's right at 96 acres um, across from the Legion. It's the old Jones Hog Farm land. Um, it's now Red Banks Farm. And it was purchased with conservation money. So at the time it was purchased, there could not be any brick and mortar buildings on that property. So you cannot put a gymnasium there, you cannot put a building with classroom space to teach classes. Um, parking would have to be gravel. So you could do a picnic pavilion, um, but it would be limited in size. I'm not sure what that size is. What about uh, restroom facilities yes, and restroom. Um, concession facilities? Restroom, yes. Concession would depend on the size. So since that property was purchased, the state, um, state and federal have acknowledged that there might, that there are some changes in requirements and what can be done, and you can apply for waivers now. So a portion of that property is wetland would have to be maintained as wetlands. Um, and those, when we did our master plan recently, so um, McGill came in and looked at all of our facilities, um, went out and looked at that property specifically and left us with a you can do this and you can't do this on that property. So as we talk about a recreation complex, I hear a lot of the same conversations that you hear in our <coughs> community. Um, it needs to be there, it doesn't need to be there. Um, Red Banks, I met with a group on Monday and the first thing they said was you can't walk to Red Banks. And I said, you, I, I agree, but we're not going to get everything in one location. Um, I tried to reiterate that um, the vote for the bond, again, is a conversation starter. So the county, um, Red Banks Farm is attractive because the county already owns that property. Um, but the decision, the draw the line decision um, would not be made until those bond draw dollars are drawn down. A site-specific master plan is done for a specific site, and then you would move forward. Can I follow up? Yeah, yeah, well, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would, I mean, if I were doing this, um, and thank you for coming out, but I mean, I think that it, it would be so much easier for people to decide to vote for it or not to vote for it or sell it to, to pass if there were some plans, if there were some just rudimentary plans and decisions about where it was going. I mean, I'd love to, I'd hate to see the senior citizens center go somewhere people couldn't walk to. I'd hate to see that all the recreation go somewhere that nobody could walk to. Um, but we just don't really have any any way to, to judge that. We don't know what the buildings will look like to some degree. I mean, you know, I, I, and I don't know that's what the all, bonds always happen, but it, it would seem to me that if you put it out there with something that people can see what it's going to be, they'd be, have much more tendency to vote for it. And we have got, I have gotten those um, same questions. The um, immediate answer is that those plans require dollars. Um, a site-specific master plan is going to be upwards of um, fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars just for the, the plan before you ever move any dirt, do any driveways, do anything. Um, and that, that's a lot, that's a lot of money. Has it been asked by the commissioners? Um, that's important, I, I feel like that's worth the investment at least. That way we know exactly what we're working on. We have um, talked and talked about recreation. Um, I would say that that is, once the bond is passed, then that's the first step. But I, so far, we have not taken, we have not <coughs> done that stuff on our own. Can a bond be increased? No. 
you can do an additional bond later, but this bond is 15 million, up to 15 million. It, just to highlight why 50 or 75,000 is so much to the recreation department, what's y'all's annual budget? Um, senior center and recreation total is around $600,000. So and those budgets so are maintained completely, completely separate like they always have been. Senior center dollars still only go to senior center dollars. They do not pay for soccer referees. It does not pay for the light to turn part. It does not pay for um, the front desk receptionist at the Northern Center. Senior dollars are still spent on seniors, recreation dollars, but when we put those together, it's... And we do, some years are a little bit different if we have a grant. Mm -hmm. um, and we do try to look and um, maximize our dollars as much as we can. Would that be eight and a half to twelve and a half percent of your annual budget just to get a plan? All right, we're going to move on. I don't want to keep you all night. I um, have been called passionate about recreation. Uh, but you decide if that's a compliment or not. Um, overly organized. Uh, again, I'll let you decide. Um, and direct. So with this next part, I want to be very direct. This um, we pull up. I want you to um, get your cards out and think about. Let's see if we can. Um, the other one. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the different things that we do in recreation. So our next slide, if the, if the PowerPoint will wake up. Um, our pictures from local events. Um, it's Senior Center uh, face painting. We do a Halloween carnival every, uh, a fall festival <coughs> for seniors every October where we do bottling for apples, we do a cake walk, we, do, we have someone in come in and do face painting. Um, we do bingo every week, ball fields, crafts. You'll see a picture from Dillard's Mill Pond. Uh, we also maintain Bennett's Mill Pond. We have an avid group that paddles at least once a week, about 45, um, 40 weeks out of the year. So they're out there when it's 40 degrees and the water's kind of chilly. We have seen a resurgence in sailing. I don't know if you've been down to the waterfront on Thursdays. They are taking eight to 10 boats out every week, youth and adults, all ages. It's been amazing. Matt Wongle does that for us. So let's talk a little bit about the benefits of uh, <coughs> parks and rec. So it can give you a place for interaction, whether that's at sailing club or whether you're meeting someone for a picnic downtown or you're going for a walk in the park. Uh, it can provide places to enjoy nature, safe. Um, it can build self-esteem, whether it's kids climbing on a playground or whether they're participating in an art class or whether it's a senior that's home alone most of the time, but they come to the senior center and have lunch a couple of days a week and then play cards on Thursdays. We have about 16 to 20 ladies that play cards every Thursday. Uh, parks and Recreation can contribute to your community pride and your community. Um, just like I have pride when Mr. Turner says the other areas reference the East and Shawan Recreation Department. Um, I hope that you as well have pride in knowing the things that we do and the things that we do well, and the things that we can duplicate. Um, it educates our children and our adults, life skills. Um, anything from how to interact with others, how to be respectful of differences, how to talk to people, um, how to be talked to, even as a, a coach on the soccer field. I have to coach a game at 7.15 tonight, and um, I have some kids, I have to talk to the kids different. Some kids are fine with me saying, get out there and go get the ball. And some kids I have to say, you're doing a really good job. <laughs> Just keep it up. Um, because if I raise my voice or get my, make my voice a little bit louder, then they immediately shut down. Um, parks and Recreation, this is a huge one. Parks and Recreation can boost your economy. It can, if you do a travel ball tournament, it's going to bring um, outsiders in your community that are going to buy gas, um, have food, it can bring people in so that your businesses grow and the demand for those businesses grows and people come in and um, start new or expand businesses that they have. Uh, it can protect your environment. Just about we talked about the Red Banks property farm. Uh, it farm property, 
you know, some of that has to be maintained as wetlands. If you go down um, Queen Street and you look at Pembroke Creek, all of that is protected with the Brachymines, I think is the, the technical term. Um, the grass there, and we have learned that we used to cut that back twice a year. It, we just went in, not with, we had to do it by hand. It, so we have to have someone in there with a weed eater that would knock it back. Um, we have learned that the best thing for our environment is to let that grow. So it helps maintain that shoreline. Um, parks and recreation can reduce crime. It keeps people busy from birth, cradle to grave, which we don't like to talk about that a lot, but parks and recreation can do absolutely um, benefit every age group, whether it's toddler time, mommy and me classes, or it's coming to the senior center. Um, we teach valuable life skills, again, how to share, how to talk, how um, to listen. How to listen is a big one in today's world. All right, so the benefits of parks and recreation, it can reduce stress, create memories. So as we talk about creating memories on your card, and I have a ton of um, memories that have already been shared, um, what are some of your recreation memories? Um, I see you giggling. <laughs> <laughs> I you go to someone else. <laughs> uh, my uh, recreation memory is um, playing Pee Wee baseball. That was the first organized sport I played growing up, and I've got very fond memories uh, of that. Okay. Anybody else want to share what their memory is, Patrick? Uh, yeah. well, uh, well, the one I wrote down was coaching the 10 to 12 year old girls all-star team. Um, we won the regional championship a couple of years ago, but I also played basketball, uh, baseball, and soccer in the Joint Recreation Department. Um, great memories. I think we did a PKC out that year with did. Anyone else? Good baseball. Yeah. Little bit yeah. Anyone have a memory that's not associated with a sport? I think no. mine was riding to the <laughs> practice and games with friends on the bike. True. Going to that event and then riding home and going to get something to snack on before you got home. So. <laughs> so, um, Probably my favorite time in school was about riding the A's and we would take the horses out on the border and try to win the <clears> um, <throat> diving board in the county. So we try to do a flip off the end of a block back into the horse. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can remember being in college and telling my dad I was going to major in parks and recreation, and he was not happy. <laughs> um, I was at NC State doing quite well, and he said, you'll never find a job. And then he said, you want to work at the parks and rec department for your whole life? And I said, well, yeah, I mean, I think I do. I love I've been to Salvation Army doing stuff, Boys and Girls Club, Senior Center, and we have been all over Wake County um, with our PRTM classes. And I said, I'll show you. So I had a job before I graduated um, at a parks and rec department. I know I said I wouldn't do that, but I did kind of, I'll show you with that. Um, but the, my first years in recreation, I did kind of non-traditional recreation. I didn't do sports at all. I did senior center. I did clubs, walking clubs. Uh, I did a young at heart club. I mean, their club activity was fine in all the places we could go out to eat. I loved it. Um, I did another group that we did a potluck every week. That's recreation. Uh, I didn't know that I like college, but I do like college. <laughs> So recreation can be far more than sports. Um, the other thing, and you don't have to share these because I know I'm running um, a little bit long on time, so I do want your cards back because I, I'm going to keep these. You don't have to put your name on them. Um, but I use them to brainstorm as I do so. So you can just pass them down to Tammy. I can get them another time. Um, but when we talk about recreation memories, and I think uh, it is nice, everyone smiles. So I was joking with um, Mayor High, and he had to go first because he was kind of giggling. But those good memories are the things that make us who we are today. And we want uh, everyone to have good memories. 
and grow in the things that they're doing. And Parks and Recreation can do that. A recreation bond will allow us to um, give to our community uh, access to make positive um, memories moving forward. Any questions? I know this is a lot. So the 96 acres, if that was not your feasible place, just because of not being able to do what you want to do, could something be done with that? Yes. And then that money go towards something up another place? Or can they not do that with the spot? That property, to my knowledge, cannot be sold. Okay, cannot. Um, but it can be developed into natural areas. Right. It can be trails, it still can be bike paths, right. it can still be recreation. Um, so our in Commissioner McLaughlin is here. Some of the conversations that we've had with the commissioners are that to use that area for um, passive recreation and that there's land adjacent to there or close to there, and then you can maybe tie those things in is an um, option. So we know that we need a recreation center um, with a gymnasium that where we're not sharing a facility. Uh, the seniors would love to play pickleball about eight hours a day. Um, and there would still be a wait. There would still be people standing around wanting to play. Uh, so they would love a space where they could just have free reign and have walking and pickleball all the time. Um, I know you've been in D.F. Walker School, so we inherited that gymnasium. It is small. Uh, when we have basketball games in there, it gets crowded. When we have two um, 10 to 12 boys teams playing and um, one game's finishing, one game's on the court, and the next game's coming in, it's crowded. But it's great. It, we love that we have that many people participating, um, but we would also love to have newer facilities. Any more questions? Shannon, thank you so much uh, for being here tonight. And um, we'd also like to thank Commissioner Larry McLaughlin for coming tonight and showing your support. We appreciate uh, you being here. Um, but thank you, and, and good luck, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. Okay, our next agenda item, uh, our committee meetings, and the only committee meetings we have tonight is administrative uh, committee chaired by my friend Craig Miller. All right, Craig. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we're going to have one item, as you see, uh, 2024 IRS mileage rate increase. Uh, as discussed at our last uh, council committee meeting, uh, the Internal Revenue Service has increased its mileage reimbursement rate from 65 cents, about 65 and a half cents per mile to 67 cents per mile for business-related activities. Uh, the town staff is recommending approval of this new rate. As an uh, administrative committee chair, I make a motion to approve uh, the, the revised, the new revised uh, mileage reimbursement rate. Second. Got a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? I will note that um, we try to encourage our employees to use the town fleet when they go out of town, so this very rarely uh, is effective for a lot of reasons. We think it's more efficient and better for them to use our vehicles. Um, but uh, if there's no further discussion, I'll call a vote on this. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that new rate increase passes. Uh, we next move to the new business section of our agenda, and the first uh, item of business is a Streamflow Rehab Assistance Program, otherwise known as the STRAP uh, Program, and it's a resolution. Uh, there's a $35,000 uh, grant that is available uh, for us to clean up the uh, Filberts Creek um, natural vegetation area, and that's located at the North Granville West uh, Pick Street. Uh, intersection and the improvements and the work that would be done with that grant would be to remove excess sediment and invasive and dead vegetation from the area. Uh, this would help uh, increase the overall water capacity of that area and also lower the impact of flooding, which is always a concern here um, in Edenton. The resolution is part of the approval and acceptance of the grant and this comes uh, to us with the recommendation of the manager, uh, assistant town manager, and our finance director that we approve the resolution as uh, presented. So moved. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Second. Okay.
Okay, motion and a second. Any further discussion? Or questions great. on the matter? Yeah, that, that, that'll help a lot. Yeah, I get a lot of comments on that. Bloods. I had a question, I guess, for Dwayne. You pick up, is there a lot of trash dropped in that land area? Uh, yeah, it, it seems to collect a lot of trash. You know, you drive from, by there, so you can't. Either from roadway debris or water, you know. It, it, yeah, it does collect. This okay. will help with hopefully, you know, screening it and being easier to deal with and manage. Good. Good. Okay, any other discussion or questions? All right, we've got a motion and second. Uh, all in favor of us passing this resolution, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Resolution passes. The next um, item is the associated budget amendment for the particular uh, for the uh, grant that we just uh, approved, and um, we would just need to um, have a budget amendment to. Uh, recognize the receipt and also to recognize the uh, expense that will uh, be associated with that uh, particular grant. Uh, do I have a motion? So okay, second. Okay, we've got a motion second. Any questions or discussion on that item? All in favor of the budget amendment for the wetlands um, restoration grant, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The budget amendment carries. We next have another budget amendment to uh, consider. And this is a budget amendment that goes back to the FY 23-24 uh, budget. And it is an audit requirement for us to balance our books and to recognize additional revenue in the sale of jet fuel. Um, we exceeded our uh, expectations for our revenues on our sale of jet fuel at the airport. Uh, in order for us to get that additional revenue, and because there was such demand, we had an associated expense with that to purchase that additional revenue. So this is just to uh, finalize the trial balance for the auditor for the fiscal year 23-24 to recognize that additional revenue and to recognize the additional uh, expense that came along with that revenue. Uh, do I have a uh, motion to approve that budget, budget amendment? So moved. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Got a motion to second. Any discussion or questions on that amendment? There being none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of the budget amendment to recognize the sales and expense uh, related to the uh, additional revenue we got from the sale of jet fuel at the airport, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That budget amendment carries. Next, we've got a grant agreement and associated budget um, amendment to consider and this is related to the 12 unit T hanger project at the airport. Um, this is a grant from the Department of Aviation. There's nothing out of pocket to um, the town and it's a 4.5 million uh, dollar um, project to build 12 uh, T hangers out of the airport. Um, <coughs> As a part of uh, the grant, we must approve the grant agreement and the budget uh, amendment um, for these funds. Uh, town staff uh, recommends that the council approve this and also the airport committee also recognizes that we uh, or ask that we approve this also. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the grant amendment agreement and the budget amendments? Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussions or questions related to the agreement or the budget amendment? Just, just a quick note. It's always said that on the and I mean, the airport struggle. I mean, I think that the needs are that team that runs that airport has gotten it so that it not only pays for itself, it's slightly profitable. And this is part of that. I mean, I think it's really a great thing for the town of Edenton. And then if you go out there for now, it's really busting. It so, I mean, could it, you know, just Congratulations to everybody. Yeah. And I think the main thing is doesn't involve expense to us. Yeah. And also, um, there are numerous, numerous streams of uh, revenue that would come from this. The two that stand out to me would be the uh, rental of these tea hangers and also those 12 planes that are there to have to buy fuel. Okay. Uh, we've got a um, motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion or questions on that? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that carried. Next, we've got the landscape maintenance contract uh, on August 26th. Um, 
when this matter was first presented, town council um, tabled the initial initial vote and discussions on the contract based on some concerns that some councilmen uh, had regarding uh, the process that was followed. Uh, since that time, uh, the town manager and staff reviewed um, the renegotiations and the rebidding and determined that the town handled the situation uh, correctly. However, the low bidder uh, has rescinded his bid, and so the second lowest bidder um, uh, is eligible for the contract now. We need, would need a vote on that. The uh, winning bidder now is uh, Jim R. Hedgepath with uh, Jimmy Jack Longcare, and I think he's here uh, today. The bid was for $85,560 and that matches the current budget allotment for those services. The town manager and the public works director recommend that council approve the contract being granted to uh, Jim R. Hedgepath with uh, Jimmy Jack Lawn Care. I would seek a motion and a second. Okay, we have a second? Okay. Any further discussion, comments, or questions on that matter? I have a question. When did that contract act, excuse me, the uh, bid actually close? The our memo states from July 26 to August 16th, the public works director accepted bids for the cemetery maintenance contract. I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any further um, questions or comments on this particular item? Okay. We've got a motion and second. Uh, all in favor of awarding the landscape uh, maintenance contract as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That contract is awarded to uh, Jimmy Jack um, Long Care, and it's in the amount of $85,560. Okay. That include, concludes our new business, and now we move to the town manager's report. And our assistant town manager, Dwayne Wilton, will handle that portion of our agenda tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so for uh, last uh, public comment session, there was nine public comments that were received on the August 13th meeting. Um, the first four comments were specific to the Confederate monument. These include an offer to purchase from Mr. Morse and general statements regarding moving or keeping the monument in its current location. Again, this overall topic is in litigation and currently restrained by the TRO from Judge Tillett. Uh, <clears throat> the written offer does not satisfy the lawsuit and moving the monument cannot take place until the suit is removed or satisfied. Uh, number two, uh, this would be the fifth comment, uh, Mr. Burroughs comment regarding the UDO not being followed for the new high school project. Uh, there was a total of three items in question. Those were the two locations requiring additional shading and the overall number of parking lots or parking space, excuse me. Regarding the two locations requiring additional shading, the town will work with the school system to try to incorporate these shading revisions from the as-builts. Um, the town plans to meet with the administration to make these suggestions. As to the total number of spaces, the current number of spaces needed, uh, excuse me, exceeds the UDO requirements for the amenities on site. The parking space are considered for the entire project area, not for the general proximity uh, to the amenities that require a certain number of spaces. The town does plan to address the perimeter parking needs for the high school in Midtown area with a larger streetscaping master plan to more unify this entire area in the near future. Uh, this also assists the parking questions here and for the ever-growing need for the parking town-wide. Um, so that would be, uh, the next would be Mr. Murray asked about the Old Crystal Furniture parking lot opening. In the past two weeks, uh, this parking area has become open. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Dablo both spoke on the hotel hidden application and announced their community meeting for the project. The major space use permit for the hotel Hinton was considered and tabled on August 26. Um, Mr. Grant uh, comment commended the police department and continued support is always appreciated and shared with the department. Other items considered timely and important. Uh, Councilman Bond uh, asked about Start times for the uh, stormwater repairs or improvements, sidewalks, and park improvements within Ward 4. Uh, this past week, the parking needs for Paxton Lane Park were addressed and completed. The first section of extending sidewalks and creating a crosswalk were also completed. Um, there are also stormwater improvements to make uh, these needs uh, 
excuse me, did I didn't prepare this. Uh, Tom, I record good. So I'm going to read this first time. Just trying to need any questions asked. Um, so uh, generally, the correct time for installation. Uh, we will start soliciting quotes for some of this work uh, beginning here soon. Uh, Councilman Costin asked about a planning session recap and update. These minutes were shared on August 20th with Council and are slated for the October minutes approval. Uh, the ARPA funding update was provided to Council on August 14th. Uh, Councilman Costin also asked for the current timeline for the park improvements, which are shown on the town's website on the Parks Project Updates page. We will continue to provide the online and on social media. We aim to start the second phase here soon. Play around equipment. We've already reached out. Uh, to a few uh, manufacturers to start pricing out some playground tile or swing sets and things like that. Okay. Yeah. That does yeah. Okay. Thank you for handling that for us tonight. The uh, next um, item on our agenda is a closed session and pursuant to NCGS 143-31811A6. The town council is going to go into closed session to discuss matters relating to the location or expansion of industries or other businesses in the area served by the public body, including agreement on a tentative list of economic development incentives that may be offered by the public body in negotiations and or to discuss matters relating to military installation closure or realignment. For those purposes, uh, we do need to go into closed session. I would entertain a motion and a second for us to do so. Excuse me, before we go, I think we skipped one of the items. I don't matter how many important Okay. <laughs> thank you, uh, Mr. Costa. Thank you, thank you, Tabby. <laughs> um, so, backing up one, uh, items considered timely and important. Uh, do uh, the members of council have? Uh, any items they wish to bring to our attention and ask for information and action upon. Yep. Uh, first comment and question. First of all, I want to say Paxton Lane um, um, Park looks beautiful. Uh, I know we're just on phase one, but uh, Kirby Guttering out there with bleachers, pavilion, um, uh, uh, basketball court itself, which is fantastic. And I love what they did for this. Uh, landscape in the back, and that's just phase one. My question is, uh, Martin Luther King Park, uh, when do you think we'll be able to uh, approach phase one with, with the MLK plan? Do you have any idea when? Um, nothing's been done yet. No, yeah, that's, and I've spoken uh, with uh, Tyler today about like proceeding and, and letting people know. Uh, as we finish up, you know, phase one at some of these parks, I don't know what timeline right now, yeah. but it, it is moving forward. We're trying, Morgan Park's taken care of. See, so those uh, people there are seeing activity in other yeah. parks, and they're kind of wondering when you're going to And then you were with us when we met yeah. on site, uh, discuss a uh, parking situation there to get off street parking and having somewhere on site. Yeah. Uh, realignment of the basketball court. We, we have a, a tentative plan in place, uh, so. As we move forward with you know the phase ones of the other parts, that's definitely going to be next on the list. One last question: Any word on uh, Granville Street and DOT? We we haven't received any word that I'm aware of from DOT regarding that. Can we have someone reach out to them and get a you know update maybe for Thomas Week on what yeah. that's going to be? Okay. Let's see if we can get that before our uh, September 23rd meeting. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'm on the right site, but I look, and we're not on the September one. So there's a paving schedule that they have on the state DOT. We're not on that for September. That's disappointing. It is. The town manager has something to add. He may have more than that. Um, Mayor, so the only update I've got, um, I reached out to the public works director in DOT last week. Uh, nothing new for the Ramble Street project, but. Um, um, I was advised that the Fred Smith Company um, should be in by the end of October to start some of the repairs um, for the Broad Street uh, project. The group does plan to start um, the paving section from Virginia Road to Church Street first as of now. Um, but we should see some activity um, in and around the right ways, which include the sidewalks, curb and gutter, and then eventually into the, um, into the asphalt, and we should see that activity by the end of October. 
Um, and that's for Broad Street. Yes, that's for any word on Bramble Street. Um, no <coughs> updates um, as of last week on Bramble Street. No yeah. I guess we were hoping to have Bramble done before Broad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other um, matters considered? Okay. Corey. Crowd is happy about the beginning of the work, but it's one question that numerous of folks have asked me. Wouldn't it have been better to fill in that big ditch before you ran the pipe to make the sidewalk go across the street for the junction? Because they are worried that still, when we get heavy rains, that that stuff ain't to be secure for their kids to go across. Yeah, I can I can answer that. So yeah, thoughts were um, put into the initial piece that's there, um, typically for uh, right of way entry, mm -hmm. i.e. crossing the ditch and private property into the, the street itself. You usually have anywhere from a 15 to 18 inch pipe, which is consistent with what if you were looking at the crosswalk from Paxton and Chirac and um, Tyler 1 and Tyler 2 in front of you to your left, that would accommodate what you have to the left side. Um, the reason that that size 15 inch pipe was included there for the ditch crossing is one, it's consistent with what that ditch would accommodate, but two, the reason is there has to be a junction box added for any grading runoff from either the street or the grass, so we've got to build a junction box there and we can incorporate the upsize of what the kind of oblong shapes are that are underneath the exits onto the old Hertford um, side of Tyler Run 2 um, to accommodate that step up in pipe. So um, everything from that end actually flows from small to larger. So we'll be able to make those adjustments for the junction box there. Um, but that was the correct need for what was needed at that one particular spot from that spot to this right here. What is the time frame for the junction box work? Um, we have gotten quotes already. We wanted why the paving and the concrete season was here to get um, what we could started on that um, with the extension work. Um, we'll be able to do any of the, the um, stormwater improvements during the winter and early spring months um, when, when we can get in front of the grass growing cycle to get the cover back and that way that we can appropriately field any lower high spots. So we're, we're in the prime as we approach winter season for, for any stormwater repairs, i.e. Um, um, filling in those ditches. And we should be able to do those. Um, we should have the bids and someone selected by the end of the year and as things cool off, we will start um, that work. That way we can get in front of that, that grass growing season that we'd like to have for things to come back in the place and so we can have So we're, we're within 30 to 60 days of starting that work. It'll probably take a couple of weeks to get through it, and we'll be right in the, the peak of our coldest season, and um, we'll be in front of that, that growth pattern that we need. And you, and you mentioned the phrase uh, paving season and circling back around the DOT and Granville Street. Can you let them know that we've got some serious concerns that paving season is going to end soon, and I've got some concerns that it's not going to be done. Yes. And that's going to be the next excuse. Yeah. So, Somehow pass that along and impress that upon them, yeah. if you will. Yes, sir. Is not rebid out after the deadline? I do not know specifics in the contracts what the agreements were for the days <coughs> or, or any um, daily rates on missing. It always uh, seems that this, this, this municipalities uh, west of I-95 get all the, the road attention more so than East 95. I guess that's a common concern people have in the state. And so there is a metric that's supplied statewide yeah. um, based on how the funding is yeah. allocated that uh, regardless of the project, whether it's in um, the metropolitan areas or um, west of 81 or east of 95, they yeah. go through the same scoring metrics. Yeah. Um, and that's across all 100 counties. Yeah. Um, every district as well as every county. I mean, they're scored evenly across, so it's, it's definitely challenging. Yeah. Everybody's talking about Granville Street. Uh, 
Are we going to get Broad Street done before Grandpa? Mm -hmm. it, it, as from the most recent update from last week, the Grandpa Street work should start by the end of October. You know, um, does that mean the 20th or does that mean the 31st? I'm, I'm not really sure, but that was the last update we had. Um, I would assume initially that that work would be mainly concrete work. So Broad Street next year. Right now, it sounds like Broad Street's going to get before Ramble Street. That's why yeah, I yeah. center my questions on, on yeah. Ramble Street. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> this crowd. Yeah. It is frustrating. It's been like that for 60 years, but we're going to keep on pushing. So our representative that's at the airport, correct? With DOT? Yes, I'm just Yeah. He wouldn't have any updates for us? If that's, if that's who our public works director works directly with. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, any of these questions we ask for, we almost weekly. That's who we reach out to. We've got a pretty good relationship with. That we, you know, quick phone call away, and we nudge every week. I understand they've had a lot of turnover. Is that correct, Corey, a DOT? There has this been, area. yeah, in some instances. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Councilman, for um, bringing those things to our attention. So now we will move into closed session. Um, per the statute that I quoted and for the reasons I quoted earlier, uh, we do need a uh, motion and second on that. So, all right, we've got a bunch of motions and a bunch of seconds. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Okay, we're now in closed session. Thank you very much for being here tonight.